So, um, hello to everybody on, on the internet land. Uh, my name is Antonio Roberts and I am an artist and a curator and musician based in Birmingham. And yeah, today I'm just going to talk to you a bit about um, how artists are using programming uh, to make music and visuals um, and be using a particular piece of software. And I guess I'll be focusing mostly on drum patterns because, because why not? So let me share my screen and hope all the technology works today. So cool. So yeah, um, this is the first slide of the presentation. That's where we're at. So um, if you want to check out my website, um, you can do it's hellocatfood.com. Again, disappointing that there's going to be no cats on the website or in today's presentation, but that's where we are. And yeah, so I do a lot of things. Um, and as I said, I'm going to be talking about um, me, how artists are using programming to, uh, programming to make art and music. So for the firstly, just a little bit about who I am. Um, for the last 10 or so years, I've been making kind of uh, music and videos and mostly digital videos. Um, these are just some screenshots of what I've been making. And you know, it uses the software that you might um, think it might do like uh, 3D modeling software, vid video editors, image editors. And, and yeah, it, it gets exhibited at festivals and online and wherever wherever it will have me really. And yeah, but I think one thing that I've been doing, which definitely a growing number of people have been doing is to use programming to make my art. So sometimes I'll be writing like little scripts. This is like a programming language called image magic. So I'll be using little scripts to make my art. And, um, but another thing that I do, which is also a bit unique is I'm using, um, I'm doing all of this at, at times. I'm doing it in a performative way and I'm doing it live on stage in front of people. So making visuals and making art on a stage. Uh, and it's a process called live coding. So um, live coding kind of is what it says um, on stage in front of people programming things live and I'm doing music and visuals. And an event, I'm doing these mostly at events that are called algoraves. So algorave is a portmanteau of two words. So algorithm and rave, put them together, smushy, smushy, algorave. And uh, the term was uh, coined by an, uh, Alex McLean and Nick Collins in 2011. And you know, they were, the first event was in 2011. And these algorithms have since been happening all over the world and uh, in London, in Birmingham, in Sheffield is where it first, I guess, sort of started. Uh, so here's the first stage, just a few pictures of some algorithms uh, that have happened. And then I'll show you a quick video of one. So yeah, just, you know, people behind laptops and I'll talk about it a little bit. So uh, this picture here is actually a, an algorithm that happened at the British Library of all places. So right, uh, here we go. I just need to, sorry, here you go.
so uh, that was just a that was just a video of a few algal raves. They happen online and they happen. Uh, well, I'm currently not in person, but happen in person. And as you probably saw through that video, um, people are also using the programming to make visuals as well as music. But today I'm just going to be focusing on the music side of things. And also, you might have seen that uh, people are, um, you know, well, I guess a very important part of the live coding and algorithm experience is that people are sharing their screens. They're showing the code that they're using to make the music. And this, I think, has two effects. It kind of shows uh, one that the that, that the people behind the laptops are actually doing something that, like, you know, because uh, I don't know if you ever gone to see like electronic music musicians playing, and it's unfortunate sometimes that you can't see like what they're doing. So you just like there is a skill to what they're doing, but you can't often see it. So by showing the code, you can see. Oh yeah, I've typed this code, and then this has changed. Um, but then I think it also has another effect, which is more of like a wider ranging thing, where it's trying to kind of dispel a lot of the uh, dialogue around computers that it's all AI and it's all taking over. And it's like, no, it's not just all like automation behind all the algorithms, behind all the programming is a human being. There's a human being who has written it, who is running it. So yeah, hopefully I think it also shows that. So um, yeah, and. Hey, anyway, back to the music. The music that we're making, this electronic music, has a lot in common with um, uh, electronic music from like the eighties onwards. Really, uh, has a lot of focus on uh, repeating, short repeating patterns uh, that sometimes change over time. Uh, yeah, again, just think dance music. And um, to talk about just a little bit of dem just demonstration of how the two compare. Um, I want to talk a little bit about drum machines. So drum machines, uh, they basically take a measurement of time, think a bar, uh, and split it into beats. And so at, at, at each beat, sorry, at each beat, uh, a event occurs. So you might have like on a certain step within it, on a certain beat, a particular instrument will play. And that's what you're doing here. So and most drum machines split time up into 16 steps. And so you have on these 16 steps, you can play however many different instruments you want. Uh, so this is a drum machine Roland TR-808. You have other ones like a more modern version, uh, uh, the Electron DigiTact. Uh, and again, 16 steps you can see there. And then the Korg Volker Beats uh, drum synthesizer. And uh, in doing some research for this uh, presentation, and also just being interested in drum machines, I came across this book from 1987 called 260 Drum Machine Patterns. And this book is great. It kind of like, um, note, in drum, notate, drum machine notation, it uh, gives you like different drum patterns which are used in popular music. And um, yeah, the way that the drum patterns work or at least here, you can see that like it's a grid and on each line is a different uh, instrument. So you have at the bottom there, BD, bass drum, going up, you have SD, snare drum, CH, closed hat, OH, open hat. And as the time goes from left to right, you have um, the, the different events occurring. So what I'm gonna do, oh, and here's a little key, but what I'm gonna do, uh, technology uh, uh, willing, I'm gonna demonstrate a little bit of how some of these drum patterns work. So so I'm going to play, if you just give me a second, I'm going to get my little, um, this is, so I've got, I've actually got one of those little Korg um, drum machines here, and I'm just going to play a bit. So here, here's Funk 13, um, let's see, so memory, load, and so you can all, ooh. so you can kind of hear that closed hat repeating uh, over and over. And the, the snare coming in occasionally. Let's let's choose another one now. Let's go to pop ten. Uh, memory load and maybe this needs maybe maybe this should be a little bit faster. Um, I'll do a couple more because I'm going to then go on to live coding. Um, yeah, disco. We all love disco. Okay, here's some disco. Yeah, 
yeah, so that's just a few patterns. There's 260 in this book. Um, and one, one thing about, so I like these drum machines. They're very like physical machines, but um, what people, what you might get with um, these machines is that you kind of reach the limitations of um, 16 steps because you might want to like split up time even more. So you might want to have, um, and you might even want randomness because you think about a song. Yeah, sure. Um, in electronic music, there's lots of repetitions, but you might want to change things. You might want to have 32 steps, 64 steps. And you, again, you'll, you kind of have those limitations. There are ways around it. Some drum machines allow you to like chain patterns together, thereby mimicking kind of a 32 step, uh, 32 beat step sequencer. Some of them allow you to have some randomness. But um, what live coding, what using programming to make music can do is actually um, give you the opportunity to have a sequence, one pattern, but that you can give it different functions to mutate. So that's what I'm going to do with you today. Uh, that's what I'm going to demonstrate now. So here uh, I have basically um, this is a pro this is a programming language called Tidal Cycles, which was written by Alex McLean, um, who also is a guy who um, invented the algorithm term. And it, for those who want to know, it's a programming language written in Haskell. It's open source, uh, free, and it runs on all operating systems: Windows, Mac, Linux. And yeah, so um, and what this does, it works again in similar kind of ways. It it works with cycles of time, so within a particular cycle of time, I guess, you know, think of it as like a bar, um, you will have certain events that will happen and they will just keep happening on a cycle. But on particular cycles, you might want the pattern to change in some way. So anyway, uh, let's let's have a look at one of these um, patterns. So let's, so here we've got Funk 13. And what I've done here, you can kind of see where it says one, zero, 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 et cetera. I've kind of replicated the 16 step sequence in a drum sequencer. And so where it says one is where the instrument will play. Uh, and BD means bass drum, SD, snare drum, uh, HC is closed hat. And so, yeah, I've kind of replicated that same grid pattern. And or also at the bottom where it says gain, this is just like for accents, so, you know, bit, bits where it's a bit louder. So let, let's have a listen to Funk 13. I can also set the uh, BPM to 90, uh, which is a, like an okay uh, speed. Let's play it. All right, that, that's all right. Uh, let's, let's listen to, to pop 10. 100 BPM. Okay, cool. Um, I'll I'll, uh, I'll skip disco because we didn't. Well, actually, no. I'll go back to disco. Uh, 120. This is a fast one. Or well, faster. Yeah. So you get the idea, like, you know, here, here's a sequence. But what I can begin to do now is bring in some conditional logic into it. So, you know, computers are good at patterns and stuff. So say, for example, I'm going to work with, um, yeah, let's work with um, pop 10, because it's what's on screen right now. What if, like, every four cycles, um, I want it to do something different? So I'm going to say every four cycle, oh, sorry, every four. And I'm going to say slow too. So what's going to happen now? Every fourth cycle, it's going to play half the speed. Not like in terms of like uh, it's going to sound lower. It's just going to play that pattern uh, slowly. So let, let's play it. And yeah, so that, that's one simple way. I could even have that every eight cycles or 20 million cycles, whatever. And it will just do that. Or maybe I want it to do like every four fast too. So now it's everything that's going to be played twice as fast every four cycles. Yeah, that's 
too fast. Um, but of course, what I can do instead of having it affect everything, I can say, let's just make it so that the um, the snare drums, only the snare drum is going to go twice as fast every four cycles. So like, you know, and this is, this is just, I guess, extending beyond the 16 steps by introducing some probability, some randomness, but well, it's not really random. It's very structured, but still like then, then it, it just stays interesting, I guess. Uh, let me think what else I can do. So I can do say chunk, which essentially splits up the pattern into four chunks of like things to work with. I mean, it's going to apply effect on a different chunk every cycle. So if I say chunk, um, and I'm going to say this one, um, let's change the speed of it so that this one will change the pitch. It's going to be twice as high as it's going to kind of like be chipmunk vocals. Uh, so chunk for, um, oops, forgot to put the four there. Okay, couldn't really hear that one. So let's put it, um, what I'm going to next do is um, I might put a, um, va I'm gonna use a vowel sound. So it's gonna, it's, a, it's like a, I'm trying to remember the word, but it's gonna like, um, yeah. The word has just disappeared for me, which is great when you're doing presentations when words disappear from you. So, uh, but let me do it anyway. So I'm gonna say uh, chunk uh, four, I like using chunk four, uh, vowel, and it's going to kind of like apply a vowel sound to the this to the um hat, the closed hat. So I'm going to use the A, E, and O vowel sounds. So you know, there's definitely a lot more that I can do. And it can even just like, for example, swap out the drum sound itself. So right now we're using BD. Maybe I want it to be a different drum sound. Just one that's the drum. You see, this one has more of a punch to it. So um, these, these are just like, a, of course, there's a lot more you can do with um, this. And what I'm going to do, I've got like about two minutes left. I'm just going to uh, play for a second <laughs> so you can actually just really see how people are using it. Um, so I've still got that same um, pop 10 pattern. I might choose a different one instead. And I've already written a bass line at the top, uh, which again, will give you a bit of an idea. And um, yeah, to show you just how people are using algorithms to kind of like extend beyond the 16 step sequencer and build some music. So yeah, let's get this baseline going. Let's get the party started in here.
cool. So that's that done. <laughs> it all worked. <laughs> so I think it all worked. Um, and yeah, I'll just say, um, if you want to learn, and I know I've just got, I've gone, gone over by a minute, sorry, but um, if you want to learn more, there's this um, GitHub page uh, or some live coding. If you just search for that, you'll see there's a ton of different live coding languages, which all have their own approaches to uh, creating sequences. Um, and yeah, check those out. But I was using the Tidal Cycles language. And if you want to learn more about live coding as a practice, the research behind it, the theoretical side, the TopLap website, toplap.org, has so much on there um and otherwise yeah thanks for listening watching and i hope you enjoyed it all thanks oh that was brilliant i loved it um thank you uh yeah no i found that um really 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 enjoyable to watch i've um i've been trying to find like meditative practices recently as i said like the last couple of weeks of, of lockdown has been really testing me and um i think watching Algo Rave might be the sort of meditative, just sort of, yeah, uh, that was absolutely transfixing. Huge fan, convert, thank you. Um, right. So uh, I know that there are some questions in the chat. And Evie, that is not a nice place to ask the questions from. I think of all the backgrounds that if you have chosen through men, um, <laughs> really happy about this one. No um, Bob here. No Bob here. Um, uh, moving on. Uh, yes, Evie, do you have any questions for Antonio? We do. Right. First and most importantly, where can we hear you? Oh, yeah. Um, here. No, uh, we can hear me. Um, so uh, I'm Hello Cat Food pretty much everywhere on the internet. Um, and uh, so I'm at YouTube, Hello Cat Food, SoundCloud, Hello Cat Food, um, and Twitter, Hello Cat Food. There, there actually is an event that's coming up um, on Friday, but it just hasn't been announced yet properly. So I can't tell you, well, I guess I could try. It's for Space Studios in London and I'm doing a, like a 20 minute performance on Friday evening, um, but the details haven't published on the website yet. So um, if you follow me on Twitter, uh, Twitter, Hello Cat Food, I'll be able to share uh, that. Any other questions? We do have lots of questions. I just need to figure out how to unmute myself. <laughs> Story right. of everyone's life right now. Uh, are there any programming languages that are more musical than others? No, not really. Um, it's really because like this, this this programming language, Tidal Cycles, was basically using like samples uh, that are like in a folder and it's you know patterns on how to play them. And it's, it's just rich samples we're using, how you structure it. Yeah, I don't know, like it's, um, but I guess if, if you want it, like this one obviously is kind of like everything's on a sort of grid, you might want something which is more like um, ambient, which is more textural. Um, there are some that are, I guess, a bit better for that, like Pure Data and uh, Super Collider are very good for like doing that very textural thing, whereas this one's a bit more to a grid, only a little bit more, but it's still, you can do great things with it. I've seen people do all sorts of music with um, this particular programming language, Tidal Cycles. So, so, so there is a question that I did not understand until just now, which okay. is, how does Tidal Cycles differ from Super Collider? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Dude, <laughs> good question. So, okay, um, basically, um, Tidal Cycles is using Super Collider underneath the hood as like the sound synthesis engine. Um, I know the, the creator of Tidal Cycles will probably like say more or could say more. Um, but yeah, I guess Tidal Cycles is using Haskell, um, which is a programming language, whereas Super Collider is more like C or at least I think C. So, um, and yeah, like I've looked into Super Collider, it's really powerful, but it's for me a bit too complicated. Where this has a much simpler notation for like just creating patterns. Next question is Have you ever heard bad library coding mistake? So, like a cat walking on a keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be great. Having a cat just walking over a keyboard and see what happens. No, um, yeah, I've seen plenty of, I guess, you know, mistakes, uh, if you call it. Like, I do remember Alex McLean did say something where it's like, if you make a mistake, just let it play four times and then you've got yourself a beat. 
and <laughs> he's kind of right there like you know people people will work out in their heads if you make a mistake just play it just keep playing it so yeah i've seen plenty of that and i do remember this one time when i was playing an event um where the musician was like doing some like very ambient kind of drum and bass and you could like i think they did something like instead of typing the number four they must have put like 40 and then suddenly it just sped up and got really loud and, <laughs> and um i liked that because it shows that the computer is alive it shows that the per there is a person on there like because you know mus musicians make mistakes all the time and sometimes that's what you remind you that they're not a robot so seeing that happen like the crowd went wild for it i i loved it so yeah i've seen those happen all the time and i'm probably going to do that on my performance on uh, friday excellent um the hush function i imagine is is just to quieten it down can you use it on people is, is my <laughs> <laughs> how do i use it in my work <laughs> Yeah, yeah, hush is great. Like I've, 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 I've had to rush to hush. Like sometimes where it's like, ah, everything's loud. Just go and yeah, type it really quickly. Next question is: Do people write machine learning algorithms to Algorave? Um, and if so, what can be used to train the machines? Um, so again, personally, when like the people that I have seen making live coding environments, I've not seen many of them like go down the machine learning and automation route. I don't like, there isn't like some massive ethics issue with when it comes to algorithm, but again, most of the people that are doing this, I know are more trying to step away from that. Are trying to show like, you know, basically show under the hood uh, rather than like have a computer do it. So um, yeah, I haven't seen that. I've seen, I've seen a couple of people like ones that generate patterns uh, like the tidal cycle patterns, just like it's a Twitter bot that just generates them, but it's not like, you know, taking over the whole show and just doing that. It, it's, I've seen it a couple of times, but not that much. Next question is about whether you ever play simultaneously with other people. So kind of a jazz jam. Yes, I do. So um, one of the videos that you saw um, was actually a, a performer I performed with um, Maria Vitek. Um, we like live code together. And yeah, like it's 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 chaotic and it's great because like we can see each other's code. We're both like I, I sometimes edit her code. She sometimes edit my bit. I'm usually like the drummer in the band <laughs> and uh, she handles everything melodic. Um, which works for us, but sometimes she's like, "Oh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna change this bit here," um, and yeah, you can you can have uh, as many programmers as you want joining in on one live coding performance. Like I've seen, at the most, I've seen four people on stage at one time, but online I've seen like six collaborating together. So, are you in that case? Are you uh, each doing your own script, or is that one big one that you are collaborating and editing at the same time? um both of those so like it's still it's still like one performance but um yeah yeah i guess yeah it, it, there's, you can do it in both ways and so when i'm collaborating with my performer uh, uh, friend like we're, we're both editing one document basically like you know imagine just editing one google document and <laughs> that's what it's like so yeah it can get chaotic another question that i'm probably too much of a boring nerd to understand is that can you tie this into regular sample libraries, e.g. Spitfire? I have no um, idea what that means. <laughs> I don't know what Spitfire, Spitfire is. is. Plane, right? I thought Spitfire was a fighter plane. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure what Spitfire is, but yeah, some if you've and but I know what sample libraries are. So if you've got samples on your computer, um you can you can use them. You can use any sample. Um, I saw a live coding performance uh, last week, which used sample of birds, and it was great. So sample whatever you want. Oh, birds. Um, has any algorithm music ever made it into the charts? So is there a commercial market for this? Well, which charts are you looking at, really? <laughs> um, I'd, uh, so in, in terms of at least algorithm, like you know, artists that I know who do this, I don't think anyone's like made it into the UK top 20 or anything. There are a few prominent li like musicians who have used live coding. So like I'm thinking, oh, the names of us who have just gone from me. Like there's uh, yeah, artist called Kindome who's uh, in Minneapolis, I think, or yeah, Minnesota, Minneapolis. Um, and then there is um, Renick Bell who's in Texas. 
um, Shelly Knots in the UK. You know, these are at least we we play a lot of festivals. Like I remember the most high profile festival that I've played was uh, at uh, South by Southwest in Texas. And then we've done like there's been people that played at Glastonbury um, Green Man Festival all manner and all the venues in london you know all we've had we've had we've done all, and, and british library you know played there how many musicians have done that eh? the, library um, rave is is the dream of everyone <laughs> this call i think um is do you ever mix what you do with with analog um so someone playing an, an actual physical instrument next to you yeah, yeah. So um, at least at the very least, like in one of the videos you saw that I had like um, analog synthesizers and I know that like they might mean other things. But yeah, so I've used other instruments. And then um, Alex McLean, I've seen he sometimes performs with a drummer uh, um, as, the, as the band Canute. Um, there's lot there's been lots of live streams obviously over the last couple of years um, well we do we do it anyway but like especially in the last year there's been lots of streams and i've seen people performing with um gamelan uh with um guitars of course uh and yeah it's 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 just like you know it's it's a drum machine like people have been performing with drum machines since the 80s and before so as long as like you've got something that's keeping time and you can play along with that and then it's 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 it's, it's the same Oh, and I've seen obviously musicians, uh, not musicians, vocalists uh, performing as well. Um, but yeah, there's there's if you go through the Top Lap website, you'll see there's uh, there's lots of links to like live streams that we've done, and they've all been archived. And like, so you could you could you could spend like several weeks just watching live streams of people doing and different approaches to it. Louise, there is your uh, program for this upcoming weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Last question is: Have you ever tried listening to a fractal? Oh, um, no. Well, yeah. depends what the fractal's doing, really. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I'm just going to, yeah. N I'm going to say no, because like, I'm going to go into the chat in a moment. So if that person who asks, has a question about fractals wants to expand on that, but um, I'm going to say no, I haven't. That's, uh, that's uh, great that you're going in to the chat because I, know. <laughs> I really I'm really struggling here. Have you heard of the Balmer Peak? Balmer Peak. Nope. I, I don't know I what it is. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uncool right now. Louise, I think it's back to you. <laughs> <laughs> um no I am like super delighted to um please can you share the link to that website in the, the chat because um sure. so part of my um last days of lockdown coping strategy has been I have discovered this absolutely terrible TV series, um, which is like, like if ER had been written by the script writers of Sunset Beach, it's like the most dreadful, trashy, melodramatic uh, medical drama. And it's seeing me through, I think it'll see me through to March 29th when the swimming pools open, but I've, I have only got like eight episodes left. So if there's hours and hours of algorithms that I can just watch instead, oh, yeah. I think we're good. Oh, I'm feeling <laughs> so much more optimistic about the rest of lockdown. Thank you very much. Um, no, that was a great talk. Um, really, really appreciate it and look forward to, um, yeah, getting properly stuck in. Um, thank you very much. And do get involved in the chat because I think more people have more questions.